Hi folks, my name is Darren and welcome to another episode of Does It Base, where today we answer the question, Amp Sims, do we need them? One of the questions that's always bugged me personally is whether we actually need an Amp Sim. Now I don't just mean with the Line 6 Helix, I mean in general, for absolute years, some of the best live and recorded tones have been a bass just straight into a DI into the desk or just plugged directly into the desk, bypassing the amp completely, which actually just relegates your Ampeg 8x10 to a massive stage monitor where you just hear yourself. Most of the time, your audience won't hear this. They will hear the direct bass sound. One of the most famous ways of actually di a bass is with a Sansamp bass driver DI. Now, Sansamp in French translates to without amp. So you can probably guess what model on the Helix that it's going for. Zero amp. Get it? It's been used in studios and live for years, and some of the best bass tones have come out of it. A bass straight into a Sansamp bass driver DI, and straight into a desk. Again, for live or recordings. On the other hand, you could just scrap the whole bass DI thing altogether and just go into a normal DI box, straight in the desk, and just have a little bit of EQ and compression afterwards and nowadays so many actual bass amps have got direct outputs on the amp which bypass the power side of it completely so you are just using a direct sound from the preamp again relegating your amplifier to an on-stage monitor now me i no longer actually own a bass amplifier i do everything with a helix i go from the helix to the front of house back into my in use and then that's me nice and simple but going back to the original question do we need any of the amp sims? So will we actually get better results just by bypassing all the amp sims or just using a preamp and going straight into a desk? Let's find out. But before we begin, just a quick reminder, if you do find any of this information useful, make sure you like, share and subscribe and you click that bell icon to get notified when I do more tips and tricks videos like this or all base covers. The more people who like the videos and comment, the further up the list these videos will go, bringing more like-minded people to the videos and hopefully we can start a few discussions about some of the topics but no arguments please also i've just started a buy me a coffee account i got a couple of services from myself available on there as well as the ability to donate to the channel purely just to buy better equipment to bring you better videos anyway aside from that let's jump in so here's what we'll be using for our comparisons first up we've got my trusty 2016 Fender Elite Jazz Bass 5. Now, this does have an active preamp in it, an 18 volt active preamp, which for the most part of the test, I'm going to be bypassing. So it's going to be completely in passive mode. However, for one of the tests, which I will put up when I'm actually doing it, I will just flick on the preamp and there'll be nothing else in the chain, just straight from the preamp to Logic Pro. Other than that, it's all going to be passive. Also, just to make this just a little bit more interesting. I'm also going to be using this. Now, this is a Behringer BDI-21. From what I gather, a rip-off of a Sansamp. However, for the price, this thing has lasted me years. It's a great bit of kit. It's never broken, but if it ever does, it's cheap enough to replace, and it's good enough to want to replace. So I'm going to be using this in the effects loop of the Line 6 Helix. And I'll make sure I let you know when that is. This is just to add some sort of analog element to the test. One of the other things to make this one a little bit more interesting, I'll be using a preset by a gentleman called David DeMatos. I'm really sorry if I got your name wrong, David. I'm awful with names, as I found out from one of my last videos. Yeah. Sorry as well, Jason. But anyway, he's created a preset based around emulating a Noble Amps preamp which is essentially a high-end tube preamp. So we will be using that preset just to get a little bit more flavor in terms of the tones. I'll also put a link in the description to David's channel where you can see him using these tones and hopefully show you how to emulate them yourself. And I do also have a friend who actually owns one of the Noble Amp preamps. His name's Leighton, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later when we're gonna be diving into using drives and dirt. So apart from that, I'll be going straight from the base to the Line 6 Helix rack, straight into Logic. For this test, I won't be using any impulse responses. I'll be using all the stock cabs within the Line 6 Helix. I'll be jamming along to a basic drum track I made specifically for this video, and I'll be dialing in the tones for what best actually suits. 
So many bass preamps nowadays have all got a drive section with absolutely no cab sim or IR capability. The driven signal just goes straight into the front of the desk, whether it be from a preamp, preamp pedal, DI out on an amplifier, or if we've got a clean preamp or DI and we just want to add a drive or a fuzz to our signal chain. Now, to my ears, these things, I don't like drive or fuzz or any gain sort of tones direct without any sort of major EQing or cabinet simulation. Without that cabinet emulation, I find that it doesn't tame the frequencies as well. They're all spiky, they've got a buzzy harshness to them with that type of setup. But with this in mind, I actually spoke with my friend Leighton. Leighton is a professional bass player who travels everywhere playing in bands, and he's the guy that owns the Noble Amp preamp. It is an absolute beast of a tube preamp DI type thing. But again, it hasn't got any carbonate simulation options. It's just a pure preamp. Now, he runs his pedal board straight into a desk, the same as what I would. The last thing in his chain is that Noble Amp preamp. But one of his pedals is actually a, uh, a three-leaf audio Doom 2. It's described as like a harmonic fuzz, almost like a sawtooth synth. But on the subject of using drives direct into a preamp without any cabinet simulation, IRs or anything like that, here's the conversation I had with Leighton. He said, I use a fuzz, it's a three-leaf Your Doom fuzz. And I've never had any issues with how it sounds. Aren't they too harsh and fizzy without a cab sim? Nope. I've never felt that way. Joe or Joanne Public has never made that feeling known on a gig. Now, in all honesty, of all the bass players whose opinions and thoughts I trust, Leighton is up there. So if he says it can sound good without any sort of cab sim, then who am I to argue? So with the same format as earlier on, and a different track, let's add some dirt. The drives I'll be using are straight from the Line 6 Helix, and we're going to be using the Big Horn Fuzz and an Ampeg Scrambler, but I'll also be driving the gain on the preamps and amplifiers as well.
So, as bass players, if we were to actually ask the question, do we need amp sims? Whether it be a preamp, cabinet, DI box, straight into the desk, I would say it depends. Here are the factors that I would say you'd want to take into account. Firstly, if you are using a Helix product, do you need that DSP freed up? Now, as a rack user, it doesn't really affect me personally. But if you're a HX Stomp or a Pod Go user, DSP can sometimes be at a premium, more so the HX Stomp. So if you are running direct, you may not actually need or want an amp or cab sim, or even a preamp, especially if you have an active bass, where you can always actually adjust the EQ on the bass itself to your tastes. Instead, to save on DSP, you could actually just use the global EQ functions and then use the rest of the DSP up on effects, drives, EQs, compressors. And the handy thing with that is you can actually just have one preset for a gig, especially now with the whole eight blocks thing on the HX Stomp. Secondly, are you using any drives or fuzzes? Now, even with everything heard and said, my preference would still be to add some sort of cab sim. You could actually just assign the cab sim to turn on and off along with your drive pedals so that when those drives are off, the cab will also be off and you are still getting that nice clean bass signal or from that of a preamp. Lastly, and this is the most important one, what sounds best to you? What sound will work best in your situation, whether that be live or in the studio? How will that bass sound sit in a mix with the rest of the band? Are you working with a sound engineer who knows how to get the absolute best out of a straight, dry bass sound? As we know, it's completely subjective. I prefer having a cab sim on all the time. I prefer having an amp sim on all the time. My go-to is actually an SVT4 Pro and an Ampeg 810, only because I owned one and I know how they sound, I know how they work, I know how they feel. To me, it just makes my sound sound and feel bigger. It gives it a little bit more of a, um, a live feel, especially in the acts I play in where I don't actually have an amplifier on stage. But that doesn't mean that I don't actually like a direct, unaltered, dry, clean bass sound. Once I get my hands on a HX Stomp and a Pod Go, I will revisit this and test the DSP out in terms of all the different options that we have gone through. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below. How do you run your bass live? How do you run it in the studio? What equipment are you using to get your sound? Whether that be using a DI box, a Line 6 product, any sort of bass preamp. What do you prefer? What do your sound engineers prefer? What does your band prefer? Or are you an engineer yourself that just prefers having a nice clean di signal without having any of the amp sims, cab sims or anything? If you do have any further suggestions for further episodes or if you have any burning questions about using Line 6 Helix products with bass, do you want any tips or tricks? Let me know in the comments below and also let me know what sort of content you would like to see. Give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram on the links provided. And again, make sure you give this video a nice thumbs up if you found some of this information useful. And hopefully we can direct more like-minded people towards these videos. Also, if you enjoy the content that I am putting out and you do want to support what I do so we can get better quality stuff out there for you guys, then check out my Buy Me A Coffee link below where you can support what we do. I've also got offers in there for services such as one-to-one -one preset building for bass players, as well as if you want me to play bass on your song. Or you can just leave a small tip for me to have a nice cup of coffee. I do have a new bonnet at home and I work a full-time job, so I need all the coffee that I can get. See? I got kids. New bon and this one. And I'm knackered. Like guys. <laughs> Give me coffee. Please. But until next time, folks, thank you very much for sticking around, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Oh, so you click. I don't know, it's recording, mind. <laughs> <laughs>